to my right is the coach Brad Donald, and to my left is Tani Norris and Kylie Hilda, the two selectors of the side, um, who have done an excellent job in, in a very um, professional manner in picking the team because it is a very difficult one because we have some very talented young ladies playing the game now and that was proven last night with uh, record ratings watching the women's game. So I'll hand over to Brad to announce the Gillaroos. Uh, thanks Chairman. Uh, I too would like to acknowledge the, the selectors um, Kylie and Tani in what has been easily the hardest Gillaroos selection since uh, I've been around um, since 2016 so um, done an amazing job and the reason it's been so difficult is because of the, the class of the players and the, uh, the level of the, the women's game and how far it's come. Uh, I'd like to congratulate and um, announce the, the following players that will be selected for the Gillaroos, Harvey Norman Gillaroos World Cup squad. Uh, Taryn Aitken from the Brisbane Broncos, Kezi Apt, St George Illawarra Dragons, Millie Boyle, Newcastle Knights, Sammy Bremner, Sydney Roosters, Ali Brigginshaw, Brisbane Broncos, Lauren Brown, Gold Coast Titans, Jamie Chapman, Brisbane Broncos, Kennedy Charrington, Parramatta Eels, Sinead Sazolka, Brisbane Broncos, Yasmin Clydesdale, Newcastle Knights, Keely Davis, St George Illawarra Dragons, Talia Fuimono, St George Illawarra Dragons, Talisha Harden, Brisbane Broncos, Caitlin Johnson, Newcastle Knights, Keely Joseph, Sydney Roosters, Isabel Kelly, Sydney Roosters, Olivia Koenig, Sydney Roosters, Shannon Marto, Gold Coast Titans, Ivania Politi, Gold Coast Titans, Julia Robinson, Brisbane Broncos, Jessica Surges, Sydney Roosters, Samima Taufa, Parramatta Eels, Tamika Upton, Newcastle Knights, and Holly Wheeler from the St George Illawarra, Illawarra Dragons. And the captains? Yes, uh, and the, the ARL Commission um, have, have announced that uh, we'll take three captains, um, and that will be Ali Brigginshaw, Sam Bremner, and Kezi Apps. Okay, do we have any questions? Yeah. So, um, obviously, a tough decision with a lot of candidates for fullback. Do you know what you're, you're going to do there? Yeah, um, and look, that's probably the that was probably the hardest decision for for us to make. Um, and it shows the quality of the women's game when someone like Emma Ton Tonegato misses out, but you've got also got a Dalian medalist, um, fullback of the year, and a Karen Murphy medalist um, in the mix as well. So, pretty much because of the four-day turnarounds, what we'll do is we'll we will rotate a team, we'll rotate the team as best we can and give everybody an opportunity to be there um, come the semi-finals and finals. So that's that's pretty much what we'll do, try and get the balance right. Were you tempted to select Jessie Southall given the performance of the year? Yeah, look, she's been fantastic and, um, and and again, like, just shows the health of the game. Um, and, you know, she's had a big year. She's, she's played in the Commonwealth Games in rugby as well as, um, a, a, you know, a really first-class performance yesterday. I think uh, she, you know, she's certainly somebody that will be named in these teams in the future. Do you look at the squad that you picked there and wonder what the level might be in the actual tournament given that the NRW has come on so far in the last couple of years, whereas, for example, the Women's Super League back home for me is, is obviously not been to the same extent that's been here. Is it a worry that you could win every game 50 nil essentially? Oh, it's certainly not a worry. Um, I, you know, that would be a good, a good, good worry to have. But yeah, look, we're all internationalists, and we're all about um, growing the women's game too. And I think we've just done it better in in our country than anywhere else because we've really invested. And hopefully, what we do is we go up to the northern hemisphere and we show them that if you invest, um, if you invest really well, that they get great reward. You know, we've our, our commission's been really strong about the growth of the women's game, and I think um, it gives us a chance to showcase it not to our just Australians, but um, um, those in the northern hemisphere. So, um, but don't 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 get me wrong. You know, like the Kiwis are going to be extremely strong. Um, the English are always strong. France have been playing really well, and and some of those other teams will be great as well. Yep, she's had an outstanding season for us at the the Sydney Roosters, and obviously she missed out uh, in Origin because she'd only just started to come back from um, having that baby, but. Yeah, it's great for her. She's a great person off the field as well, which is, a, is something that we look at when we're putting together a side as well. So I'm really excited for Sam. Did you make her up to him yesterday? What did you think of her 
Yeah, Meeks was outstanding yesterday. I think, um, you know, she's been playing some really good footy all year. I think just to cap it off yesterday with the Knights and the performance that she put out there, she really showcased the, the type of footy that we want to see, not only for Australian level, but Queensland level as well. I think she was outstanding yesterday. I hope you mentioned with Jesse Southport over the come games. I hope one is a tough sort of like Bunny at the league who's got that long tour experience from going to the Olympics in the squad. Yeah, most definitely. I was really fortunate to, to coach a couple of those girls a couple of years ago when we um, when we worked with the Warriors in 2020. And what we found out really quickly was those girls, and this is where the this is where the game's heading. The more opportunity they get to to act as professionals and and transition from the amateur to semi-professional and professional, the better prepared they are, the better the product. So um, yeah, it, it, somebody like like Vani is uh, is going to be a big boost for the squad. Yeah, and it's a it's a great problem to have. Um, it's hard, and it's hard for, and this is why I acknowledge the great work that, that Kylie and Tani have done because their their role in this is important too. Because as Origin grows and and there's more games and there's more opportunity, we're actually going to need to expose those girls to the higher level. So um, it's it's going to get tougher, and it's hard because a number of players that have like helped dig the well are the ones that are missing out. But that just shows that there's a, a bunch of people, a, a bunch of young girls, and and also I want to do you know. Know, acknowledge the NRLW clubs in how they've um, how they've adapted and and how they've um, made sure that those players are prepared and the product is great. Uh, it's not like preparing a men's team and um, those those NRLW clubs that have that have been really we've we've seen you know nearly all of the NRLW clubs since the inception make the grand final. So they've all taken it extremely seriously and they've they've had a big part to do with this as well. Yeah, those three captains, what can you sort of tell us about them as leaders for the team? Yeah, fantastic, all th all three of them, and, and and again, just in our discussions around the tight turnaround, we've got, um, you know, they've they've all been state captains before. Uh, Ali's the only one that's captain the Gillaroos, but Sam Bremner was named as the Gillaroos captain in 2018 before um, she had her first baby. Um, great leaders, great people around the team, and you know, they you know, it goes without saying, anybody that knows them knows that they're the right people to lead both on and off the field. If you've got them all playing in one game, who's battery? Ah, good question. Probably, um, they're all a bit too kind for that, to be honest. Probably Ali, I'd say, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. there's only about half a dozen survivors from 2017. Yep. So, I mean, that shows the growth of the game. Uh, there was no winner or a W event. No, that's right, and, and the success of the 2017 team is probably why we're, we're, we've got an NRLW. So um, putting it on show was was great, uh, and then you know the NRL and the commission jumping in and, and starting in 2008. We've come a long way just since 2018. So uh, there, there's still a number of players running around, and you know we saw Vanessa Foliaki. She was in the World Cup squad last year. Uh, sorry, in the World Cup squad in 2017, play play yesterday, and, and other players. So there's still a couple floating around, but some have moved on and. and into retirement or injury, so um, yeah. All right, thank you very much.